Yeah, thank you so much um, that, that you are still with me. I'm super happy that, that uh, we have still a, f a few people in the audience here. It's quite, quite a lot, actually. Um, thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I can live up to the promise that Martin gave you that this is like an awesome talk. Uh, not sure. I have done some talks in the past, but uh, this kind of weighs on me now, so hopefully it's going to be good. Um, usually, I'm doing this talk together with Felix, my uh, dear colleague. Um, sadly, he can't be uh, here today, and that's why I need to do it alone, which is uh, even harder now, uh, so more pressure. Um, it's super sad that he's not here because he's uh, one of the people who I in uh, introduced into HTMX, uh, or more, like, um, more correctly, to Hotwire. Uh, we'll dig into that in a bit. And uh, he got really excited about it, and uh, that's why he's always a motivation for me that I uh, tell more people about the framework. And um, yeah, I'm super happy that I could convince him to, to look into it uh, deeper. Uh, maybe a few words to, to me and to us, and then um, we are going to start into the topic. So um, I'm Benedict, I'm CTO of Talent Formation. Uh, we are a digital transformation agency consultancy here in uh, Hamburg. And um, we are doing a lot of technology projects where a lot of teams are involved. So mostly projects with three, four, five, even 17 teams. And we need to build software systems that um, can be built by multiple teams independently and very quickly and fast. Um, so reducing uh, the dependencies between these teams is a huge challenge for us. Um, because if there is too much dependency, then these projects tend to get slow and costly. Um, and so we try to figure out what are good architectures for independence of multiple teams, and we also try to figure out how to um, compose these teams based on skills and, and, and such um, to have a very good project. Um, and Felix is one of our talents, um, one of the members of such team, um, who is one of our senior, most senior uh, developers, um, helping us um, more on the front end architecture part as well. Um, yeah, and we both are like technology enthusiasts for, for a long while now. And that, that should be enough now. Uh, branding part over. Uh, yeah, let's dig into the, the talk. Why, why am I speaking about this anyways? So um, I'm, um, I'm, I'm following DHH, and DHH um, kind of invented a Hotwire a few years ago, 2018, I, I think. Um, at least I found it 2018. Um, there has been Turbo Links. Does anybody know Turbo Links? Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, the older people. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, Turbo Links was uh, like a, precess a predecessor to Hotwire, or a lot of the ideas of Turbo Links got into the into Hotwire as well. And um, yeah, that was. Uh, I, I actually had a talk on on Co Talks uh, about Hotwire a few years ago. And um, yeah, I, I really um, got excited about the technology. And that's why I'm speaking here again, uh, because it, it got picked up by other people. And uh, you are here today as well, so a lot of you. So um, it seems to be still a very valid and, and uh, good topic. Um, yeah, I'm not the only one who thinks uh, so. So there are other people like uh, Sebastian Betts from About You. Um, he also found that, that Hotwire is a very good uh, framework. There are others like um, Unpoly um, uh, that are going to the similar direction. Um, so I don't want to only say HTMX is great. I want to kind of talk about the approach that they are doing. Um, and I like the approach. Um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the, the, the why. Um, so when we do these projects with these teams, multiple teams, we always have the challenge to integrate into, in the back end and integrate the teams in the front end. So, so back end integration is not our topic today, but front end integration. And in the front end integration, we usually have the problem that, that these teams use different kind of uh, technologies for their parts of the website or of the application. So one team uses maybe React, and the other team uses Vue.js, or one team uses Angular or whatever, right? Um, 
you could do something like everybody is, um, is only allowed to do React, which is totally fine. But the problem is um, you would still build multiple React apps because you want to have these teams independent from each other. If they deploy or build a single app, um, they, they have a dependency in the build process, at least in the build process. And uh, that is what we don't want to have because this dependency makes the teams slow. Um, so you end up with, um, uh, to be able to have multiple apps, either all React or different uh, frameworks, you kind of need something like a, an app shell or whatever, right? So like Astro. And this introduces a lot of complexity in, in, these, in these architectures, right? So you have multiple teams. They are using different front-end frameworks. And you have Astro uh, as well, maybe, or like a, a different app shell to, to, have, um, to have them integ integrated into a single app again. And um, this is getting, like, like getting a lot of complexity into the architecture by default. And my problem is this by default, right? So not the complexity or not that we are using the frameworks, but we don't think about this stuff anymore. We just pick some single page application because everybody is doing it, right? And I want to kind of break up with this idea of you always need a single page application because you don't. And the problem is that currently, if you don't use the single page application, your front end kind of sucks, right? So there's no partial loading, there's no um, reactiveness and, and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's a lot of effort to build that on top of the plain uh, HTML website. Uh, but you want to have that because of the user experience. So yeah, you're kind of stuck, right? Um, Anyway, so let's look a little bit deeper into the challenges that we have with this architecture. Uh, another uh, challenge that we are facing a lot in our projects is that, um, that when we find a bug, right? So uh, something is not working, communication between Savwell, Astro, React, and something is not loading. Don't mind the specific bug. But um, we kind of need to look into this huge pile of code, right? These frameworks are very complex, very huge. They have like super... Uh, super complex phases like hydrations and server-side rendering and what is going on in the different state exchanges. And um, when you find the bug and you cannot work around it and you issue it onto the um, framework uh, and on GitHub, you often have the problem that they simply do not find the time to fix it or they reject your approach to fix it. Um, and then you are even more screwed up um, because you kind of like need to figure out what you do now. Um, so this has happened to us a lot of times in these projects um, because we are as a company still like a very small fish in, in their huge pond of users, right? So they don't care about our specific um, problem that we have. Another thing that annoys me about these uh, frameworks is I don't always need a JSON API, right? So I, I, I know that it's like good to have an API and in some use cases you, you really want to have an API. But if you don't want to have an API, but you still want to have a front end, you still need to first build some JSON representation of all, all the data that you want to put into the front end. And then you would need to build the front end on top of that and serialize that again into a different model. And this is kind of like putting it a step more into my development process that I don't need. Why can't I just build the correct front end model in the back end already and put it as a as HTML into the, the client. And, and also, this kind of architecture sometimes promotes us to write uh, CRUD services and just put the database representation into the JSON and then kind of figure out in the front end how to deal with it, right? And this is also not very good, I think. If, if, you, can, if you manage to do this good, then this is really good, right? So you have a JSON API for the view model. That would be super awesome. And then you can take this view model and uh, build the page on top of the view model. But as I said, often you just push out some entity from the database. And this overhead also costs a lot of money and also a lot of environmental damage, right? So um, we always need to serialize that from JSON representation, so SQL to JSON to, to the HTML. There's a lot of serialization and a lot of CPU and a lot of power getting wasted, um, a lot of heat. Um, so 
maybe it's also good to get rid of that, right? Um, in the end, I have a huge list of stuff, way more um, things that I, that I find super annoying. Here's just a, a short overview. So, um, yeah, preparing the stuff in the back end, told about uh, deployment units. You often have like a back end deployment and a front end deployment. Then, then you, you know like Webpack and, and all these builders have super complex build steps and you need to test all of that. You need to do dependency checking, security checking. You need to update all of that. So, yeah, it's just a lot of effort that you need to put into that. Um, despite like having this in the architecture, right? So there's a lot of work to do just handling that. Mm, and sometimes if you don't optimize for it, if you just take it plainly, right, it's, it's also kind of slow. It can be very fast, but you need to figure out and really stick to the patterns to make it fast. Um, yeah, and even if you bundle it and minify it, you sometimes have the problem of, of putting a lot of um, data into the client before it can actually inter interact with the app uh, completely, right? Um, so yeah, there's a huge list of, of stuff that annoys uh, me and where I kind of think, why, why is this the default, right? So it couldn't, it, why do we take this for granted that we always just say, let's do this and, and take all of these negative things without thinking about a different approach? And, um, what kind of is also a, a, a trigger of the real world, so away from the technology side, more into, the, into our client side. So when, when we do projects, it's, it's often content-heavy websites, right? So a, a web shop, an e-commerce system, some kind of catalog. Even if it's B2B, it's always something like, uh, like you have to display a lot of products, a lot of images, lists, and stuff. So there's not a lot of for us at least, and not a lot of graphs and, and live reloading of stuff. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know why I need all of these features from the single page application. I, I, I might just want to have some, some dynamic filtering, right? So, um, and for this dynamic filtering or for this adding stuff into a basket and kind of showing a counter or something, I use the single page application for just this tiny, small amount of Interactiveness, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, this is uh, our default, right? And I wish I could build something like this. Um, ah, there was someone who wanted to take a picture. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of our default, right? So uh, I, I, why, why, why are we doing this? So I like this even better. So I, I can focus on the, H, it's, it's uh, smaller in total, and I can focus on the HTML on the standards and just need to sprinkle some tiny bit of JavaScript on top of that. It's not that I don't like JavaScript, I really do, but um, it's, I don't really know why it's necessary in these uh, scenarios. Yeah, there was a pattern in 1979. So yesterday, Mike Sperber, uh, a dear friend of mine as well, had a talk about Elixir and Erlang. And uh, he, the whole talk was like, yeah, we had that 40 years ago. 40 years ago, we could even do that, and, and Java implemented it now. So um, there's a lot of, we had that back in the days, and now we figure out that this is kind of cool, and this is like a huge innovation now. Um, and I find that we had that already, right? So we had MVC pattern, 1979, and we were able to just render HTML from the backend into the client, and it was kind of fine, right? So uh, we didn't have all these annoying stuff that I put on the list. And um, we kind of like came from maybe PHP in the beginning or whatever template rendering engine framework you were using for doing MVC. And um, then there was this um, problem that you would need to do some interaction in the browser. And then there, there was this browser war. You all know that, right? So you need to have something like jQuery to be able to um, standardized between the different JavaScript uh, um, languages um, or deriv derivatives. And um, I, I feel that we kind of went on a road and didn't think about this road so much, right? So we came to JavaScript and then, oh, I need to reload some stuff. Ah, okay, there's Ajax, let's introduce Ajax. And then, hmm, well, jQuery, okay, but uh, it's, it's still too complex to do all of that stuff. And then someone invented Angular, right? And, and now we are on this journey and, and not thinking about it anymore. Um, 
Okay, so let's go a little bit more into, so I stated the problem a long time now, so let's look a, bit, a little bit more into the solution side. But I think it's pretty interesting um, the to understand the problem that I'm, that I'm facing, right? So, um, be, um, and the problem, uh, I mentioned that a, a few minutes ago as w uh, already, is that traditional web applications, you always need to have the full page reload, right? This is the only thing that really annoys me when I don't have SPAs, is to have to do a full page reload all the time. Right? Because I sometimes want to partially reload something, and this partially reloading is al almost all the time enough for me because I can have a counter then or I can have a dynamic element or whatever. Um, and this partial reloading is, is pretty, uh, it's not that easy to implement um, when you don't have a framework that helps you to do that. Um, and uh, it wasn't that easy a, a few years ago because there was no uh, server send events, right? So HTTP protocol um, got very good um, and, and increased their standards and now can stream stuff, right? Well, now it's always uh, already a few years, but um, there's no need anymore for doing long polling, stuff with jQuery, uh, always checking if there's new content and stuff like that because you can now do this with HTTP standard. So now came, comes around HTMX, and um, HTMX uh, utilizes this idea of uh, being able to stream stuff, um, especially streaming HT uh, HTML. So why stream JSON? You can stream HTML. So um, the idea here is that you have a page, a body, div, button, whatever, and the button is, uh, is initializing some trigger, and now you don't need to fully reload the page, but you send uh, HTML, partial HTML, back to the uh, front end, and there is a f small front-end JavaScript layer that is called HTMX uh, that then knows how to partially change parts of the website. Um, and they can also do a lot more, but this is, as I said, one of the major features that is enabling a lot of the other stuff that HTMX is doing. Um, and I'm... Um, I want to uh, yeah, embrace that this idea seems not only valid to me, but also to other people. So this HTML, uh, HTMX framework is getting a lot of traction this year, um, a lot of stars on GitHub. So um, the idea seems to be um, very um, up to date. And um, yeah, now I think it's time to show some code, right? Yeah, OK. People are nodding. Um, that's good. Mm, I prepared a live demo. As you know, live demos are very critical. So let's see if it's working. And there's one more pun. So is anybody seeing the pun? I don't know. But I'm actually into Star Wars uh, Outlaws. Uh, anyways. Um, John Romero was actually referring to that in the talk before. Anyways. Um, Try to be funny. was not funny. Uh, that always works if you say that, actually. Uh, yeah. um, OK, I have an annoying bug. Uh, I need to work around here. I'm always on this EAP versions of IntelliJ because I want to have the new stuff, but the new stuff sometimes has bugs, so I need to restart it. Uh, I don't know what they broke, but something is broken there. Um, it's not in my project, obviously. Um, yeah, so I, I have a project here, and I will go, um, you don't need to read that now, or um, I, I will just go, um, let, let's open the, the build gradle first and look at the time, okay. Um, so it, this is like a Kotlin project, yeah? For anybody who is not able to write Kotlin code, not that important, you will be able to read the syntax. Um, I have a Spring Boot framework here. You can actually use HTMX with any backend framework you want, right? There's no limitation at all, none. Um, you can even use it with static um, files, right? So there's no need to do anything with, a, uh, with Java, right? You could use Alexia Phoenix framework, for example. Um, I'm using Java here because I just had it in hand, right? So, um, or Kotlin. Um, yeah, this is Gradle, uh, the version control uh, or dependency control system of, of, um, of Kotlin or Java projects. So what you can see here is I have a few... Um, Dependencies, I'm not using the, the usual um, thyme leaf template engine. So again, you can use HTMX with any template engine you want, any template engine. I'm using JTE template engine. I really like it. It's a 
newer one, uh, very uh, fast, um, whole lot of other talk about JTE. Uh, not doing that now, but maybe you, you are interested in digging into that a little bit deeper as well. And as you can see, I have um, N uh, HTMX here and uh, Bootstrap. I, I just, like, um, I did it here in, in Java just for the demo sakes, right? So you wouldn't need to do that in production like this. You could, um, but um, yeah, anyways. And um, then what I also have is I have a um, repository uh, for products here. So a product repository, fairly standard. Um, I have a database of products, which is just a, a local list here in the memory. Um, and there's a product, right? So some, some attributes on the product. You can get all the products, and that's it. Um, so the database is pretty, yeah, not that smart. And then I have a basket repository here. So there's a basket, which is also a local empty list. It's mutable because we want to put stuff in there. Um, and uh, yeah, we can put stuff in there, and we can get stuff out of there. Um, yeah, if I'm too fast, just like shout or anything, right? So that you have like a f just an overview about the project. Oh, zooming in, yeah, that is a good point, thank you. Uh, I always forget that, that there's this great presentation mode. It's better, right? Okay, so let's, let's go quickly here into the repository again. Product repository, list of products. Um, so more importantly, like this is how a product looks, right? So title, description, price, you can get all the products. The basket repository has the empty list of the products, um, with, with products in there, yeah, in the basket. You can insert stuff and you can find all the products in the basket. And then you have like, like we always do, we have a service which then just does stuff on the repository so you can get all the products. You can search for a product using a query which is just a string so it's pretty easy here with a filter. Um, you can just, fill, uh, you can just, just search on the title um, and um, it, yeah, it just searches for the string in the title. Find all the products and add, add stuff into the basket. I think it's, if it's not in there yet or something, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. It's just putting stuff into the basket. Mm. So this is like a very small uh, backend. And what you then need, because you are using HTMX, and so you want to render the stuff in the backend now, right? So you don't have a have a controller rendering JSON, but you have a controller rendering HTML. So I have a um, controller here, uh, under slash, or root, or whatever. Um, you, can, you can get a page, you can give a query or not, right? And then if there's no query, you just get like all products, and if there's a query, you, you search for the products, and then it puts the, the query um, in, in the model. And it, so this is like kind of the MVC stuff here, right? So you, you're probably, I, I don't know who's still used to that kind of programming, uh, but um, so you have this model which then is passed on to the template, and the template then uses the model to fill the template and render it. So what we need to do is we need to put all the stuff into the model that we need in the, in the template. So I'm putting in the products here into the template and into the model, the query because I want to show the search query in the front end, and the basket count. We will get that later uh, to show the basket count as well. Then you can um, add stuff into the uh, basket. Don't mind that it's get mapping. I know that's like super bad. You could do it as a post mapping, but for demo sakes, it's, it's nicer to have it as a get mapping to also be able to open this, this page just, just to show that the page is working. Mm. And uh, yeah, you put stuff into the basket here. You are giving uh, a path uh, variables, um, ID, and, and um, uh, the ID of the product that you want to add as a, as a path variable here. You can see it here. Um, and then you have this response. And in the response, um, yeah, you need to basically um, add something here that we want to check out later. Um, so I still have a few minutes, I guess. You can get a count. Uh, which uh, returns just the count, right? Uh, so um, you can search. Um, searching is just giving a, a query, and then you get uh, back um, a, a rendered a component here. We will also look into that in a second. And uh, yeah, you can, yeah, maybe the more is also nice, so you can have like more of something, which is also a, a product list that gets rendered here uh, with 
where it's just randomized and shuffled products uh, in there. Yeah, and that's basically the, the um, requests you can do into the back end. Some of them are different because some of them return templates, right? So list is, they render a uh, so um, returning a string here means that the Spring framework will take that string and look for a template with this name and render the template that has this name. So if I uh, give a uh, list here, it looks for the list template, um, which is this one here. We will look into that in a second. And you can see we have sometimes we have like a response here, a, a server response, and not the string, right? So it gives just a, a servlet um, response um, without rendering a template. Here's the template again. Um, yeah. OK, before we look into the templates, just le let me just show you what we have here for a second. Uh, couldn't have done, could have done that earlier, sorry. Um, so um, you can see we have like a turtle shop here. And it's already working um, pretty fine. Ah, I wanted to remove, sorry, I wanted to remove the HTMX for a minute and show you that it is working without HTMX as well. So let's get rid of HTMX, let's reboot it. Um, not sure if it's out now, but let's check. So I want to search here for cozy and nothing happens. That's great. I wanted to have it like that because we don't have HTMX yet, right? So I cozy and I can do search now. And what will happen now, as you can see it in the, in the network tab, is that it's going to do a full page reload. So the search is already working. It's doing a full page reload on the same uh, website, but with the queries this time, right? So there's Cozy in the query. And um, you can see that, that I searched for Cozy. Um, and when I, like, um, without a query, it's just returning the full list, right? But it's always doing a full page reload. If I press on Add to Cart, nothing happens. If I do a full page reload, nothing happens. So Add to Cart is not working. Um, and searching for Cozy again is working with the full page reload. OK. I'm going to add HTMX now because I want to have some interactability here, right? So I want to have, if I press on Add to Cart, I want to have the counter here um, tick uh, up. And if I, want, if I press Cozy, I want to live reload the list, right? And not um, only when I uh, enter and, or press on the search button. Um, and what I also want to have is I don't want to reload the page all the time. I want to partially reload the, the list as only and not, not the full page. And what you need to realize is this search is not on the list in the client. It's on the back end, right? So it, search, it really searches when I press Cozy. It will search the back, in the back end in the database and search for the products. It will not just filter it in, in some single page application way in the, in the client. And let's uh, check out how you can do that. Um, but first, I need to, sorry, start my IDE again. I know it's super annoying, but I was not able to fix it before the talk. Um, at least I find it super annoying. Um, so I have a few more minutes. OK. I need someone to tell me how, many t how much time I still have. Um, but I was just going to take that counter. Um, yeah, so I built an app here. Um, so we have a hat with the, with the JavaScript uh, in here and, and the bootstrap stuff for, for the prettiness. I just used some, some uh, ChatGPT-like um, tool to generate me the, the whole thing. And um, here uh, uh, in, the, in the main area is, uh, let me find it, sorry. Where is it? We have the navigation. Uh, here is the content, right? Um, so um, when you look into the list, and this is the list template is the one that I'm um, rendering, right? So when I go into the index controller, I'm rendering the list here, and this is going to go to list, and then you can see that this is actually a, an extension of the template app and putting in content. So all of that, so this is the JTE syntax now, right? So. And all of that stuff is getting to go, uh, going to go into the content um, attribute here. Um, and what you can see here is that I have a form. This is the, the search button. And I have the, uh, the list here again as um, a component. It's a product list. And I give the products into the component. Um, 
and the component can be found here. This is the product list. Um, and for the P in product, I will have like one of these uh, squares, um, rectangles, for each of the products. And as you can see here, because we are on the back end and we are using the model, it's super nice because you have like the, uh, the um, um, you can have the product and the uh, image URL here, so it actually knows that it's part of this, um, this repository, product resp repository. You have auto-completion here. Um, and uh, yeah, JTE is even doing a little bit more, but let's not go into JTE that much. Um, and yeah, so the first thing that I want to do now is I want to show you how to make the search more interactive. So um, to do that, we need to, um, to do this. So let's first, before we do it with a, a key up and key down, let's first just enable, oh sorry, that was the wrong way around. Uh, first, just enable, I, I know I'm doing it very lazy because I commented it out, but um, I, had, I didn't want to take any risks. Uh, so, uh, so you have this HTMX post, which is, if you press on the search button or if you interact the form, you send the form, it will kind of like not dispatch it to the, um, to the server immediately, but it will kind of do stuff with it before. Um, so it will do the search query in, in the background, right? And then the result will come back, and it will do stuff with the result. And now we want to tell him what to do with the result. And for that, we need to say what, what target. So it, the result will be HTML, right? The result of the search post, uh, we can look here into the index controller, will be this component product list, so partial HTML, right? And, and this partial HTML will kind of look like this, just as more of that, right? Because we iterate through the products. And now we need to tell him what to do with this partial, um, sorry, going back into the, into the list, and need to tell him what to do with this partial, um, partial HTML. And for that, we, we are giving the form an, an HX target. And the HX target is bound to this post, right? So the, the, the form post will now know to update the um, product list. ID, so there's, there should be an ID product list somewhere, and it's here. So now he knows the, HTMX, uh, the HTML who comes back will need to be placed into this, into this uh, div here. Okay, so this, uh, if we only activate that, we don't have the full page reloads anymore. So if I um, type cozy now and uh, search, it will not do a full page reload. Let's, let's verify that, okay? So um, go into the um, website again, and when I, um, let me do a few reloads to be sure, and when I say cozy now and press search, you will see, oh, it already, it already worked with the, that shouldn't have worked. Uh, cozy. Why is it work? Ah, I get ah, okay, I got out of the form. Yeah, I got out of the input, and that triggered him to, to do the search, okay? So, um, yeah. I got out of the form, and that triggered the search, yeah. So you can see here that it's, it's just localhost still, the first request, and then doing the, the searching in the, in, the back, uh, in the back here, the search request, getting, giving away the, res the HTML response. Um, Okay, that is kind of cool, but now I want to have it as a live search. So um, what I do is I say, well, there is a trigger, which is input changed, and we want to have a delay of 200 milliseconds, because if we do not have a delay, our server will just burn down. Um, so what we do is we add that here, the trigger. Um, let's reboot um, to be sure. And now it will al already work when typing. Um, so. Pretty neat, I think. Uh, cozy, and now it already works when typing. And this is basically the idea of, uh, of H and, and HTMX is now adding up on that, right? So um, the, the basic idea is always the same, but uh, now it just adds up on that. Um, so one more last thing that I will show, and then we are kind of out of time, I think, because it's already, yeah. So let me not stress that too long. But if we want to have a, a add to basket working, we just simply can have this link, right? This add to cart link, 
and also do a, a, an HX get here um, to this uh, other route, right? So we had this route of adding to the basket, add to basket here in the back end, the route, and now uh, I'm just going to sell, uh, tell the link that this link will get uh, this URL and will not swap anything, so that means there's no, um, no target on the website that needs to be, be uh, refreshed or something. It's just uh, not doing that um, at all. Um, for demo purposes, we could have done it with a, with a target as well, um, but what I wanted to show is that um, in the back end, this thing sends an HX trigger. So it does, not rend it does not return HTML, right? So it just returns this header to trigger this event, uh, which is somewhere here. It's the name of the event. And now um, this event is getting fired, um, but after adding the stuff into the basket, right? Um, and this event now can be, um, yeah, in, again in the front end, be, be watched on and stuff can be done based on the event. So let me quickly find where this is uh, used. So it is actually used in, um, in, in, the ran in, in the app itself because the app has this thing in the header here. And um, what is here is this, um, this uh, trigger from the body um, that it will get the, uh, the basket count. So when this event is getting fired, it will get the basket count. Um, and then it will uh, show the basket count in, 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 the, in the span here. That is why we have the, um, uh, here we had this uh, swap none, and we don't have that here, because if we would have it here, he would not update the counter. Okay, so let's just, um, Show that into the, ah, oh, okay, oh, sorry. Mm. Need to restart again, last time. And then I'm uh, up for some questions. Um, so uh, this um, makes the, um, yeah, let's go back here. Okay, restart it. And um, yeah, what happens now is that if we press on add, add to card, it will count up the card, right? So um, you can imagine what is going to happen. Uh, Let's see if I, if I did everything correct. Yeah, so it is counting up the card. Um, okay, so one last uh, thing, uh, not showing anything more here. Uh, let's go back into the slides. Um, the last thing that I wanted to mention before, um, okay. That is not, um, well, let's just keep it like this, also fine. Um, the last thing that I wanted to say is um, I really, really enjoy HTMX because of one more reason. And I'm not sure if you found that out um, out of the demo, but it is actually super, super, super awesome when, we, when you work with multiple teams. Because one team can respond to a trigger with HTML, partial HTML, and the other team can have a place on their part of, the, on their um, website, on their top level URL, and tell them, here is the part where you can render yourself into. And this is how you can, some of you may the, know these server side includes, where you can do that in the back end, um, but with this framework you can do that in the back end and in the front end as well. Um, so you have this idea of, um, having a place reserved on, on the website that you are responsible for, for a different team, for content of a different team. Um, and uh, who wants to know more about that, why I found that so good to have, and, and how we are utilizing that in our architectures, um, you can come to me, ask me questions, talk to me, but this is like one of the major benefits for our work that we are doing every day. And uh, given that, I want to thank you all for listening. It has been a pleasure, and hopefully you have a lot of questions. Thank you.